So thanks for watching. Uh, today this is a uh, production cleanup sluice from Keen Engineering, 12 inch wide, 48 inch long, uh, that I added a V mat at the top to make it a full 48 inch of mat. Uh, it's electric, so using two pump that I will put the description in the uh, detail in the description. So two electric pump, 1100 gallon per hour each. Um, what I also did is uh, I modified the uh, uh, feed upper washing system using uh, PVC pipe with uh, drilling holes in it. And there's plenty of washing capability uh, that goes with it. Because I'm using electric uh, pumps, uh, you need to minimize the pressure drop. So I'm using a Gardena quick connect hose. Super easy to connect when you show up at the river with valve to adjust the level. Also another feature with time, uh, with experience, I put this bubble level and then so I can be sure that I got the perfect five or seven degree inclination. The feed upper is adjustable as you can see. And I'm using a concrete uh, vibrator to give the vibration to that uh, feed upper instead of using a trammel. I also put other bubble level on the legs to make sure it's perfectly level when you start and that makes things way faster. I put a little screw at the end to hold the mat so that uh, there is no other gizmo to hold your mat. Super easy, it holds things in place and then it's easy to take it out and wash. Put the rocks over there. Designed to get about 15 seconds to get most of your rocks out of the hopper and then you're ready to put another shovel in. 13 degrees seems to be a good starting point, can go up to 20 degrees. And of course, as you go up in uh, inclination, the washing time goes down, but it clears your upper easily. So in the next two videos, I will show you in slow motion how the rocks move through the hopper. For the feed upper, what was coming with the sluice was the bottom screen, the gold one. And what I found is that all the rocks were getting stuck in it. And it was a really pain when you dig in the river. So I had a grizzly made in a perforated sheet, uh, all both of them in aluminum. What I found is that the grizzly was good, but all the water was flowing the channel and you were losing gold and water uh, in the, from the upper. So the perforated aluminum plate actually was the best one and 316 inch is uh, small enough that uh, all the rocks uh, comes out and don't get plugged and uh, not a lot of water actually is coming out of the sluice so that's the best screen I found in terms of reliability and efficiency for that sluice. The electricity drawn by the two pumps and the concrete vibrator is 11.5 amp and I'm using a 60 amp hour battery. So after four hours, I still have uh, energy left in the battery to do at least one more hour. So the weight saving of a lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, it's about, I would say half of it. So a typical lead acid battery would be of that size, would be about uh, 35 pounds. And this battery, uh, same capacity is about 17 pounds. So I'm using a concrete vibrator, 40 watt, which I um, adjusted the length of the cord to make it more portable. But because it works on 110 volt, I had to put in a project box a um, converter from 12 watt 
a 12 volt to 110 and then with the fan speed adjustable inside the box to adjust the vibration level. So these motor are adjustable. Uh, that's the uh, concrete motor. And if we go can and remove it, and you can easily adjust the amount of vibration by removing that screw here, and then you can see you can take some plates out or you can offset some of the plates in order to increase or decrease the vibration. And you can do that on both hands, this hand or, or that hand. And that gives you the exact vibration that you need for the vibrating deck.